This is Akashwani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you an exclusive interview with Dr. Rodrigo H. Offerin, World Health Organization representative to India on World No Tobacco Day. Interviewer is Aditi Tandon, Akashwani correspondent. Today we have with us WHO representative for India, Dr. Rodrigo H. Offrin, to talk about the challenges of tobacco use, especially in Southeast Asia region and India. The World No Tobacco Day this year revolves around the theme, We Need Food, Not Tobacco. Welcome to the show, Dr. Offrin. Thank you very much, Aditi. Is the challenge of tobacco consumption and, you know, the growing demand for tobaccos, especially among the youngsters, is peculiar to India or is it a problem across the world? It is a problem across the world. You have to know is that the tobacco industry uh, tries to find its replacement customers. What does that mean? It's because there are around 8 million deaths related to tobacco, attributed to tobacco yearly. So the industry needs to find its new customers. And that would be the next generation, and that's why it's really targeting marketing uh, for young people. The tobacco industry invests around $9 billion U.S. dollars each year to advertise its products so that there will be a a replacement for the customers who die. I'm being very blunt about it because that's precisely how the business is run. And these strategies include advertising and product placement on movies, TV shows, and through social media platforms with paid influencers. You have sponsorships of sporting events that's seen everywhere. And then you also see flavors appealing to children in smokeless tobacco e-cigarettes and shisha or hookah. It makes it look like it's cool. So to counter these tactics, in fact, the the government of India has a lot of uh, legislation and measures to counter advertising, especially to children. So the ban on tobacco advertising, it's called the Cigarette and Other Tobacco Product Act of 2003, the COTPA, helps to reduce the visibility of tobacco products and prevent young people from being exposed to tobacco advertising. You see that in movies, mainstream television, but the, the next phase is to really stop it in OTT platforms. Health warnings, India has one of the biggest, it's 85%, you see the graphic health warning, and enforcement of age restrictions. So, and lastly, the the latest is that India is one of the countries that has banned uh, electronic uh, nicotine delivery systems or e-cigarettes. I would like to bring you into this e-cigarette debate. This is a very uh, curious area for a lot of consumers also. You see a lot of uh, marketing of e-cigarettes is being done as less harmful. And a lot of people believe that chain smokers, if they actually transit to e-cigarettes, they will be in a position to ultimately quit. Is there any scientific evidence to support this? Although e-cigarettes do not contain tobacco, they contain liquid nicotine that is vaporized and inhaled by the user. So that alone is already the addictive element of cigarettes being delivered to you through a different system. Nicotine is the addictive substance in tobacco, and the e-cigarettes deliver nicotine in a form that can just be as addictive as traditional cigarettes, so there's no difference. E-cigarettes are being marketed as a tool to help smokers quit. However, on the contrary, these may have the opposite effect and lead to increased nicotine addiction. Since the nicotine is highly addictive and exposure to it can impair brain development and also increases the risk of heart and lung disease, they also pose a significant risk to pregnant women who use them, who think that it's it, it, it's fine because it's electronic and, and a, a different mechanism altogether. The government of India has adopted strong measures, as I mentioned, against electronic nicotine delivery system through a dedicated act. It's one of the first countries that did it, and this was in 2019. So this legislation protects our future generations from getting addicted to nicotine and other products. The global public health community is learning from this step done by India. Yeah, I have two questions for you with respect to students who attend school and the youngsters in general. What is your message to this generation which is progressively being addicted to hookahs because, you know, it's considered fashionable? And is there any growing evidence within the WHO system in consultation with the countries that more and more youth are being addicted to tobacco? Use of different forms of tobacco, whether they're hookah, electronic nicotine delivery systems or e-cigarettes, is just as harmful. And my message to young people is that don't get fooled. We even have a campaign of uh, two World No Tobacco Days uh, previously where don't get duped. And it was a message to young people that there is a deliberate attempt 
to fool you and addict you. So this is important for young people. Uh, the evidence that cigarette use, tobacco use causes cancer is bad for your coronary and cardiovascular system. It causes hypertension. It causes myocardial infarction. It causes stroke. Uh, that's the one message in your head when you take an, a bad substance. And I think for me, if you really want uh, a message for the youth, please don't get duped. All forms of nicotine and tobacco are harmful and addictive. The evidence is out there. Right. That's a very firm message coming from you. An estimated 198 million people of this Southeast Asian region are smoking tobacco and almost 266 million are using smokeless tobacco. In fact, 80% of the global prevalence of smokeless tobacco use is in our region and perhaps in India. Is that a matter of concern to you and what is being done to stop that? Indeed, it is a matter of concern because almost 90% of that estimate of smokeless tobacco users are in India. See, whatever the form, as I mentioned, is the same issue. You are taking in tobacco. You are taking in nicotine, and therefore that's harmful to your health. Now, this is precisely why um, we didn't, our campaigns, especially in this part of the world, it's not about cigarettes. It's about a tobacco-free initiative. It's about being tobacco-free. So it covers all forms of products that have tobacco or nicotine and all its additives. So there are some forms of uh, smokeless tobacco that is already prohibited in India by law. Now, the problem is that it's also very much tied to an informal sector. The smokeless tobacco is actually assembled at point of sale. You go out to the villages, small stores, you know, you, you want your uh, chew tobacco, your good gun, it will be assembled for you. And therefore, there is that whole non-formal industry that's more difficult to regulate or, or control. And so that's, that's where all the action needs to happen. Education, of course, the public, the consumers, education from the ones who make it because the touching tobacco leaves also makes you absorb that. There are many people who are in the tobacco industry, they don't know, but their skin is also a way to absorb that uh, harmful substance. So there are many ways to do this, but it starts at a very public driven, public demand driven. You have to let people know that this is bad so that there is a counter to it. As with many health initiatives, of course, the, the regulatory, the laws will work also if there will be stronger implementation, but there has to be that acceptance and demand from the public. Absolutely. Uh, coming to the larger challenges of tobacco in terms of health, we have just put COVID as an emergency behind us as a public health emergency. But when we were into the pandemic, the WHO repeatedly reminded us that the use of tobacco, you know, increased the risk of uh, dying because of COVID by around 50%. Is there any evidence to that effect, you know, now that we are almost in a post-COVID stage? How much of tobacco interlinkage with COVID disease and death has been documented? So I don't have the uh, exact figures, but here is the simple physiology and logic of that uh, message. COVID is a respiratory disease. If you have it and your, old, your lungs are already affected, then it was much faster for many of these uh, COVID patients who smoke to go into severe COVID and even die. Number two, tobacco and nicotine and its products causes other non-communicable diseases which were proven to be the comorbidity that increase your chances of severe COVID or death, meaning hypertension, diabetes, if you have already had a, a myocardial infarction or blocked arteries. So that's where that messaging was coming from, from WHO, that this is so associated with Smoking. So obviously there are post-COVID complications linked to tobacco also. Yes. I wanted to understand from you, you know, we see these advertisements these days of some of the influencers, especially from the film industry, marketing certain mouth fresheners. Now that gives a confusing signal, whether they are surrogate tobacco ads, whether they are surrogate smokeless tobacco ads, what are those? Some of the very uh, famous uh, actors have been marketing certain mouth fresheners. Even people like me uh, get a confusing signal. I think it's, it's also part of that game of the tobacco industry to gain entry in 
into bodies of people. Th there are some of these products and, and to get a big Bollywood star to endorse it is further uh, just proving the fact that uh, the tobacco industry finds it, it, its way to confuse people. These are surrogate products. That's what they really are. And uh, same brand name and endorsed by the big celebrity. It kind of uh, to the regular person says, ah, let me take that because it, it's not tobacco technically. It has enough to get you addicted. See, these things are so addictive that it doesn't need too much. But when you have frequent use, you get a, a larger dose and you start getting addicted to it and you keep using it. Right. Why do the governments find it so tough to engage these celebrities, you know, otherwise? Because probably they are smokers or they paid for by, they have contracts with the tobacco advertisement industry, which pays a lot. So I guess that's, that's the opposite. I mean, you, you have other celebrities that are also advocates for, uh, non-tobacco use. So that's, uh, you, you have to be working more for those who would want to, uh, end tobacco use. You know, coming to the climate change challenges that tobacco growth and production is posing, uh, some of the uh, data points are really disturbing and they tell us that globally tobacco cultivation, production and distribution produce an estimated 84 megatons of carbon dioxide equivalent annually, you know, and this is obviously going into the atmosphere. How do you look at this challenge of climate resilience? So I think um, let's frame the the issue around uh, tobacco being an environmental hazard. While the harms of tobacco use on health are well known, its negative impact on the environment has not received much attention. And uh, tobacco impacts the environment at various stages, from growing and cultivation, manufacturing, distribution, use, and disposal. So in that whole cycle, that whole continuum, you can imagine what it's like. To give you a perspective, 200,000 hectares of land are cleared annually for tobacco and ag agricultural curing, for agricultural and curing use. Every year, around 22 billion tons of water are used in tobacco production globally. That's 15 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. Production and consumption of tobacco releases 80 million tons of carbon dioxide in the environment each year, which is around 2.8 million rocket launches. So, so you can imagine the kind of carbon dioxide release that uh, tobacco industry and its users contribute to the environment. Those are shocking details, really. So as you said, that tobacco growth and cultivation is wasting resources and damaging our ecosystem. But what is it that can be done to encourage farmers involved in tobacco production to go for other crops? What is the solution to this? Thank you. The question is actually the, the theme of this year's World No Tobacco Day. This year's global theme is we need food, not tobacco. And it, we really, our aim is to raise awareness about alternative crop production and marketing opportunities for tobacco farmers and encourage them to grow sustainable, nutritious crops. Not this poison, which is a huge industry. Food is also a huge industry, so why not move there? It is very apt for tobacco growing economies and advocates for suitable policies and strategies to enable tobacco farmers to shift from growing food crops that would provide them and their families and everyone else a better life. See, the WHO uh, Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, it is a legal instrument. It is binding. Countries have signed on to this. And every uh, article around it is still um, being discussed with experts and enabling countries so that their policies actually implement a, f a more fuller counter to tobacco use. And um, one of them is the promotion of economically viable alternatives for tobacco workers, growers, and individual sellers. That's Article 17. And on enhancing the protection of the environment, which we talked about, that's Article 18. So the implementation of these provisions is what we're trying to highlight in this year's World No Tobacco Day. On that note, uh, let me thank you for this insight. And let's leave you with the message that you delivered to the youth don't get fooled thank you so much be smart don't start that's the idea thank you thank you very much Aditi you were listening to an exclusive interview with Dr. Rodrigo H. Offerin World Health Organization representative to India on World No Tobacco Day interviewer was Aditi Tandon Akashwani correspondent 
This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on Air. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on Air Official. 